All right, so we are here doing a clutch master cylinder on a 2007 Mazda Speed 3. Um, as you can see, we already have the battery out and the battery tray out. I actually got here after this had been taken apart, so I didn't get to show what happened beforehand. Um, and there was just an electric go-kart that drove by. Um, but what you want to do is this line just has this little ring right here. You can kind of see it right in there. It's a little snap ring. You just get a flat head on it, pull it up, pull this line out. And that's how you get there. Next one is this line. And it also just pulls up and comes off the nipple that's on the bottom of the master cylinder. And then on the inside is where the fun begins. All right, now we're inside. And this has already been messed with a little bit. As you can see, this was the failure. The, uh, the push rod actually snapped. Um, but it's actually not horrible to get out, but it's not fun. You have one nut there, one nut over there, one up top kind of past that connector so you can barely see it. And then I turned around now, so there's the firewall way up there there's one right there and that can actually no it's even further than that i lied it's way up there is one and it can be reached using a ratcheting 12 millimeter wrench all these are 12 millimeter i believe i didn't take most of them out i just took out this last one because he couldn't find that one so those are taken out now and uh it should come out fairly easy now we'll find out of course, I also forgot before you try to yank this thing out, you want to disconnect all the connectors to the switches that are attached. I think there's only two, but we'll find out here in a minute. But like I said, I think there's only two. That's not too bad. But just disconnect everything before you get that out, including clutch lines on the outside. And that should be about it. And actually, while messing with these, I found out you don't even have to unplug them, which would be the worst part because you're just so tight on space what you can actually do is this one just turn it pop and then it will come out with a little bit of persuasion and this one you can see that clip right here on the back right there and you just lift that up and push it back i lied uh instead of actually pushing it back that way you want to pull it that way so you lift up on the clip and pull it towards you and then up, uh, obviously. All right, so now everything is disconnected. You can see it, everything moving very freely. Uh, the main thing holding in right now is the master cylinder. I'm seeing if I can get this to work its way around here any, um, but it should still come out like this. It shouldn't be a problem. All right, to also make more room, you want to disconnect this U-joint on the steering. So it's also a 12 millimeter. You just get on there, you undo that, and you have to take it all the way out because there's a notch inside of this shaft that, lock, that the bolt locks into. So you can't just loosen this and slide it off. You have to actually take it all the way out. All right, now this may be a little bit of a struggle, um, but what I ended up having to do was get a pry bar because the way the mesh zone is kind of wedged in there, you can see when it's in there, you have to actually push it through and then twist it. Uh, to lock it in, you have to turn it clockwise. But to get out, you have to turn it counterclockwise. And for some reason, the plastic was jammed up on there and it was acting like a clip. So I had to get behind it with this pry bar and pry the master cylinder out. And it came right out, but... So, should just be able to grab this. And I also have gloves on because the thing cut me with its sharp metal. So you gotta watch out for that too. Now, one thing to mention here also is that it may actually be a little bit easier to turn the master cylinder 270 degrees clockwise instead of turning it 90 degrees counterclockwise. Like, it seemed like it'd be the easier thing to do, but the way the notches are on the master cylinder, it may actually be easier to do that. Um... Now, to be turning this master cylinder, you're probably not going to be able to do it with your hands. So, since you have the brake pedal assembly loose, 
what you're going to want to do is go ahead and get a pair of channel locks, decent size, I mean you don't want them huge because you're going to be under the dash, but a good sized set of channel locks and grab it to twist it whatever direction you're needing it to go. You can grab those square pieces that are on the front that actually come through the pedal uh, that kind of encompass the circle that uh, surrounds the push rod, but they can kind of strip kind of easily, so what I was doing are the two passageways for the fluid on the back side of the master cylinder that actually protrude through the firewall usually. Uh, I was using those for leverage. So after fighting with it for a while, um, which you'll probably end up doing, it, it will be a fight, uh, here's your master cylinder and you got the pedal out. You just want to make sure this part is pointed down, but remember you got to lock it in. So you're going to turn a little bit counterclockwise. You put a bit, of course, you don't put this through right now. You don't want to mess with it right now, but you can see it seats in there just fine, flat against it, like that. And then once the pedal is in there and everything, you're probably going to have to hold someone so you can rig something up to hold this in place. This is going to go through the firewall first. Then you're going to put the pedal on, slip this through the pedal, and then turn it clockwise, and it'll lock in there. Um, I'm not going to fight with it too much right now because I don't want to fight to get undone, but it's pretty much just put it in there and turn it clockwise once it's in there. You don't want to mess with this right now. And then simple part, putting that in there. Alright, so here's the master cylinder. And I actually have my buddy Chase back behind the wall. You can see him right there, yeah. Um, I'm going to put this through here and he's going to plug a line onto it to hold it in place. So. As you can see, the part is would be down right now. The part of the clip would be down, so I'm going to turn it a little bit that way. And also, you're going to have to mess with getting it through the wall, I believe. All right, let me look at it. The whole... Okay. Alright, so as you can see now, we got it clipped in through the wall. We, we're just using the one that doesn't have the metal spring clip on it so hopefully it swivels a bit better um, I mean also you don't want it to have too stiff of a line because you're still gonna have to pull it back through the wall to twist it easily more than likely it's not gonna be very easy using these but I mean we'll find out so doing it like this actually and by this I mean putting the master cylinder in first and clipping into a line it may still work for you but we had some trouble doing that so what I ended up actually doing was pulling the push rod out of the master cylinder to make it longer um, and feeding just the push rod through the hole the master cylinder is supposed to go through in the clutch pedal assembly and then kind of just work them both up there together uh, because it's really difficult to get there's, there's just really not enough room to swivel a pedal assembly up around through that push rod onto there. I mean, you may be able to do it, but we just couldn't make that happen. So what we had to do is put them both up there simultaneously and uh, just making sure that push rod stays inside of that hole is the main thing because that's how you're going to be able to pull the, uh, the rotating part of the master cylinder back through that hole. The push rod through the hole as you push the assembly back up and be sure not to get the harness caught anywhere on the assembly or where it'll be cut or anything. Now I couldn't actually make a video of how to install the master cylinder into the pedal assembly because it is such a pain to do. So what you have to do is you want to set the pedal up there kind of you want to set it on the studs that it came off of and you want to have the master cylinder through the firewall and you want to have it have the push rod coming through the pedal assembly. Uh, then you want to make sure it's the round part with these four, you see the round rectangles around the master cylinder in the picture right here. Those rectangles are actually what you're going to use to turn the master cylinder most of the time. If you happen to strip those then you'll have to use the back and it's kind of a pain. But this picture is showing the the front view from the inside of the car with the circle being the part that slips through the pedal assembly and also those squares slip through the pedal assembly. 
and the red circles show the back side that you can't see that the clutch lines actually plug into and you notice there's a big one and there's a small one and that is what angle they should be at before you twist the master cylinder clockwise and you'll feel it slip into the pedal assembly and you just want to make sure on the outside of the car that they are at this next angle now if you were to look from the engine bay looking at the back of the master cylinder this is what you will see the red again means that you cannot actually see that you'll only see the black uh, you'll see the big port and the small port for your clutch lines. All right, now the, this is the what you'll be turning it at. The orange arrows show you what direction you'll be twisting it, which is clockwise. And you just want to get your pliers on there and twist it, and you'll keep twisting it. And it seems like you'll over twist it, but you just want to keep on going out and making sure that once that bottom clip, the big black circle is at the 6 o'clock position when viewed from the the engine bay that is when you are done twisting and it, you should kind of feel it snap into place a little bit and not really want to go any further but that is for sure where you want to stop is when that the biggest nipple on the master cylinder is at the 6 o'clock six position as you can see we're all back together we have all the switches on there and uh, now we're jacking it up and we're going to begin the bleed procedure next thing I need to do though is connect the steering shaft back on there which is fairly simple uh, you can see that notch tells where the bolt's going to be so you just kind of line it up luckily our steering wheel's locked so I may have to get the key real All right, quick. So now as you can see this is back in pedals working extremely squeaky uh, but that's just the spring so we're going to begin bleeding here in a second. All right, so we're having a problem with getting the bottom brake line in. You can see it down there. What you don't want to do is hit just the plastic part, the cone part that's on the line, because that'll actually knock the cone off and the line won't create a good enough seal. So you actually have to push the line in to get it to seal. And that's the biggest issue we're having. We're trying with a hammer right now. We've tried with our hands. But that is something you might run into. Alright, so I thought I'd go ahead and mention today we're doing the master cylinder on a 2007 Mazda Speed 3. And we actually did not get it completed because the clip that actually snaps into the master cylinder that feeds the slave cylinder, the fluid, the line that, that actually it has that clip that goes on the line and gets pushed into there, it would not seal. Uh, we couldn't find an o-ring that might have fallen out. We tried to find some others that might take the place and actually seal it up and make it operate properly. But uh, today we did not have luck with that. We're going to try again tomorrow. But essentially, I mean, you shouldn't run into the problem we ran into. Uh, I think there's an o-ring that somehow got misplaced. But essentially it just all goes back together how it was. Uh, the biggest issue really is just getting... It all out and then getting the master cylinder out and getting it back in and once it's in and locked in place where it needs to be then it's all set you know you just put it back together I have another video uh, about bleeding procedure that should be helpful uh, bench bleeding which would be kind of difficult without this master cylinder goes in I don't think you could really do much bench bleeding because there's not a reservoir on it but, you know, maybe it's possible to do something. So, that's something maybe look into. I'll leave a, uh, a card for it. So, uh, that's about it. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think.